This full video is an overview of basic printmaking techniques. We'll always need things like a placemat paper to protect our table, a, some kind of printing plate and good paper to print onto, ink, and water for various uses. Sometimes we'll need some of these other tools, depending on what we're doing exactly. We'll start with a marker monotype that makes an abstract, blended, colorful background. Here's an example. Our printing plate for this is something shiny and non-permeable. I'm using a transparency sheet, acetate plastic sheet. You can also use tin foil or any kind of thick sheet of plastic. The ink for this is just water-based markers. I'm using Crayola markers. Cover the printing plate with marker in all different colors. Choose colors that blend well together. Fill the entire space. You want to cover the entire plastic or foil printing plate completely. Next, you're going to spray that with water. So you want the ink to start to bleed. So protect your area, move anything else aside you don't want wet, and spray directly onto the printing sheet, the acetate sheet, from about 6 to 12 inches away. You don't want to be so close that you actually just wash the ink off of the plate. Now you're going to place your paper on top of the printing plate and burnish. Burnishing is just rubbing and adding some pressure and basically transferring the ink to the paper. You want to make sure the paper and printing plate don't shift while you're burnishing, so I always hold them with one hand while burnishing with the other. I'm going to flip this over just so you can see the printing plate from the other side, the clear side, and you can do this also if you're using transparency for this. And this helps me see how the marker is pushing around and blending around and moving. Carefully peel it off if you're happy with how it looks. And then we need to just go clean this in running water and dry and we can reuse this many, many times. Next we'll take a look at styrofoam relief printing. These are examples, one on the left is using ink and on the right is marker. We need to start with a sheet of styrofoam. It's thin styrofoam that we will carve into. And first we're going to draw our design on, I'm using a piece of tracing paper. Tracing paper works really well because you can easily see through it. So I'm drawing a quick, simple design with some interesting lines. Try to fill the space and think about how you're balancing your design out. Now, stamps and printing plates print in reverse. They, they have to be a mirror image of how you want it to look when you are done. They basically print backwards. So in order to transfer this, what we need to do is flip this tracing paper face down. So I'm going to flip it face down onto my styrofoam, like so. And I'm going to hold this very steady and use a dull rounded tip tool like a ballpoint pen to trace the lines. We don't want anything sharp that will cut the styrofoam so we want to trace our lines with something really rounded. A pen works very well for this. Make sure it doesn't move as you're tracing. Once you think you're done tracing, check a corner and lift it up slowly to make sure it has indented the foam before taking the paper off totally. 
When you know you've got it done, you can take that off. You'll most likely have cut through the tracing paper in some areas while tracing, and that's okay. We don't need to reuse that tracing paper. And you'll notice the printing plate is a mirror image of the original design. This will make sure it prints correctly. Now I'm going to use another dull tool like my pen to retrace the lines directly on the styrofoam. While I'm retracing on the foam, I want to make sure my lines are of an even thickness and even depth all the way throughout the design. Now before we ink and print, let's think about how stamps work exactly. So here is an example of a sort of stamp, and you see this side the design is raised up. That raised part would touch the ink, and the raised part of the design would print. On the opposite side, it's the same design, but it's pressed into the block, so you see nothing standing out, which means the negative space, the space around the flower in this case, would be picking up the ink and printing. Here's another little example. It's just a small letter J. You can see it's a J from the front, but the stamp itself is in reverse, just like the design we're working on now. You have to make sure things are in reverse of how we want them to print, especially letters and words. So just a quick test. I'm just using a little bit of marker on this to show you. I'm not doing a fancy job or inking it or doing it right, but just to give you a quick example of the impression. When I color the surface of this, and print with it, the only part you're going to see that prints is the part that was raised. That is the part that sticks out, that picks up the ink, and that touches the paper first. And again, you see it as a mirror image. That's really important to what we're about to do here. So let's left raised on my styrofoam printing plate. It's actually all the negative space, the space around my blue lines. The pen lines are dented into the styrofoam. You can see I can stick my fingernail into that crevice or crack. So everything around the blue lines is popping up and that will be receiving the ink and that will be the part that prints. So let's try printing first with markers just to get an idea of how this looks. This is a marker ink print from my styrofoam. So the ink we're using is just Crayola water-based markers. And we're going to color these negative spaces, everything around the blue lines, all the raised white parts of the styrofoam need to have marker on them. You do not want ink or need ink inside of the cracks, inside of those lines that we traced. So we're going to avoid getting ink or marker inside of those cracks. We want to make sure we color everything that's white. So the entire background and all white areas, all negative space, will get marker or ink in this case. For this kind of print, we are going to be wetting the paper, so we need a bin of clean water and a clean sponge to do this. I'm going to start by soaking my sponge in water. It's totally dry right now, so I need to soak it first and wring it out. We want to really dampen the sponge. We don't want it dripping. I need to soak it first to get it started, but then I'm going to wring this out completely. over the container, so we don't get water everywhere, please. And now I'm going to gently brush the paper with this wet sponge. 
I don't want to soak the paper. I don't want to rub the paper. I'm sort of just dusting the sponge across it like a paintbrush. Going in all directions, making sure I have the corners and edges covered with water. When you have enough water on the paper, it should look slightly shiny, but no puddles or areas where the water's pooling up. Carefully pick up your inked plate. Make sure you don't put your fingerprints on it because your fingerprints will pick up that marker. And I'm going to flip the plate and place it in the center of the damp paper. Make sure you don't move or shift the paper or the pr printing plate. Gently burnish the back of the styrofoam with your hands. Remember not to let it shift. You're putting gentle pressure, always holding it in place. Make sure you're burnishing the center, the edges, the corners, everything. Now you can carefully check how things are printing by lifting a corner and taking a peek without shifting the entire plate or paper. If you see that it looks like it's transferred enough, you can very slowly and carefully lift it off. Make sure you don't let that styrofoam bend or crack or crease. That's really important. And here we have a marker print of our styrofoam relief carving. Notice it's in reverse, which is what we wanted. So now I'm going to write my name and the date on the bottom right. I'm using a pencil. You can use a pen if you have that instead. But write neatly, write small, and write legibly, please. This will need to dry, so you'll have to put this on a drying rack or let it dry next to you for a few minutes. If you're done printing, you're going to rinse that styrofoam printing plate under running water. Use your hand to carefully rub the ink off without bending or denting the styrofoam in any way. Dry it carefully as well, and remember it must be dry if you want to re-ink it with marker or any other ink now. Next, let's try using actual block printing ink on our styrofoam plate. This is that same design, and this is what it looks like with blue ink. So this is blue block printing ink, Speedball brand. This is used for relief prints. It's a very tacky water-based ink. This is a brayer, which is a hard rubber roller meant for rolling ink. And you always rest your brayer on its back, otherwise the rubber roller will dent and get a flat spot, which we don't want. I start, when I haven't used it in a while, by mixing and loosening the ink in the tube, sort of just giving it a massage. Then we unscrew the cap carefully and squeeze out basically a caterpillar of ink onto your inking surface and close that back up right away. I am using a sheet of plexiglass for my inking surface, but there are many, many options in that area. I'm going to use my brayer to roll out my ink, both vertically and horizontally in both directions. I pick up the roller and I put the roller down. I pick it up and put it down. You hear the sound? It's like Velcro, it sounds sticky. Block printing ink is sticky, and you should hear it and see it peeking up and standing up and have that sort of orange peel texture. Make sure there are no globs that might sink into your cracks, and then roll evenly onto your printing plate. The ink should sit flat on the raised areas and should not ooze down into your carved areas. Again, when you're done, you want to rest your brayer on its back and you want to make sure it stays out of the main pool of ink. Don't get the back of it covered in ink. I'm going to pick up my printing plate very carefully, again, avoiding fingerprints, and flip it over and center it on the paper. Press it down a little bit. It should begin to stick because this ink is a little more sticky and then burnish. Now this is a time lapse. I burnished for a long time and much slower. I'm adding pressure, rubbing smoothly without scratching the styrofoam plate, getting into all the sides and corners. Peel and check a corner to see how it's transferring.
If it needs a little bit more, you can put it back without having moved it and burnish additional time. Once you think it's all set, check again. And when the transfer looks good, remember peel apart slowly, making sure that the styrofoam does not bend or crack. Beautiful. That's a good one. At this point, I could add more ink to my printing plate and make more prints, or I could stop and label things and clean up, which is what I'm going to do now. I actually made a print before this. It was a test print. It didn't come out as good, but I am keeping it. We want to keep all of our prints, so I'm writing my name and the date on both of them. It's always better to have too many than not enough prints, and you can always use a poor print in a collage or print on top of it or use it for some other purpose. Remember to clean and dry your printing plate. Get all the ink off the front and back and make sure it's dry before you put it away or use it again. Additionally, we need to clean the brayer and the inking plates really, really well in running water. Keep it toward the bottom of our sinks because the water is pressure strong and you don't want to spray people. And remember the edges of the brayer, the back of the brayer, the handle. It can take time to get this sort of block printing ink off. It's very sticky and you have to be careful not to splash anyone with inky water because this ink can stain clothes. Here's styrofoam relief block printing ink prints. Next, let's take a look at linocut reliefs. This is a piece of linoleum. It can be carved like wood with special carving tools. To begin with, again, we're going to start with a piece of tracing paper and I want my tracing paper to be the same size as my linoleum block piece so that I really know what space I have to work with to make my design. So here I'm just folding this over so I know exactly the size of this paper. Now I'm going to draw my design for my linoleum cut. And when you're doing a linoleum cut block print, you want to keep your design simple when you're first learning this. So it's okay if you don't have a lot of flare and curves, keep your lines straighter than you think and keep it really simple for your first effort. Remember that printmaking reverses or flips your design. So in order to get this to print correctly, I need to flip my design onto my block print here. So I'm flipping my tracing paper, drawing face down onto my linoleum, lining it up. And I'm going to hold the tracing paper on the linoleum as tightly as I can while I scribble trace my pencil lines on the back of this tracing paper. And scribble tracing is basically tracing, but going back and forth more than once over the line. The goal is to make sure the single line pencil mark on the other side is transferring to the linoleum. I want to make sure I can clearly see my lines when I pick this up. There we go. That looks like it transferred very well. And again, you want to make sure you transferred your image flipped. It should be a mirror image before you go on to the next step. Now it helps to color the parts you will want to print solid with a permanent marker. Here I'm using a Sharpie. The areas I'm coloring solid black are what I want to have the ink. So I won't be carving those. They will stay raised and will print a solid ink color, whatever color ink I use. I like to have nice clean lines, so when my Sharpie is completely dry, I like to erase any stray pencil marks or pencil marks that are sticking outside of my Sharpie marker. Okay, so this is a lino cutter tool. 
The blades on these lino cutter tools are very sharp, so please be careful with these. And when you are using them, you want to hold the handle in your palm and always push the blade away from you and away from your hand. You never want to put your hand in the path of the blade. Always keep your opposite hand to the side or behind the lino cutter and keep the lino cutter angle low just as if you're shoveling snow. That's how I like to remember it. So you're just sort of gliding it and scooping up little shreds like shredded carrots of this linoleum. So here's a little shred that just came off, a nice long one there. They don't always come off long like that and that's okay by the way. You want to work slow and steady when carving linoleum. I am about to do a time lapse where I speed up the video so you don't have to sit and watch every slow minute here, but um, keep that in mind. You need to work slowly and very carefully. So whenever I'm in a corner or I have a curve, I always start in the corner or the curve and carve away from it. Remember to turn the linoleum block as you're working and it helps to carve the outline first to act as a guide and a stopping point for the rest of your carving marks. Now this linoleum piece is a little older so they get hard over time. We can heat them up a little as we carve and just before we carve an area so keep that in mind we might have to do that. Can you see the texture here starting to develop? You should be able to see it and feel it as you're working. Um, I decided last second here to add a border. I thought it would have a little extra added detail. As you're carving, you really want to think about the direction you're carving, the direction of the marks, okay? Because as you can see, it's never going to get totally flat with this type of carving tool. So there are peaks and valleys. And the peaks that are raised up, many of them will catch ink, which means they will print. So think about the direction you're carving so that you have an interesting design or a logical design in your negative spaces where you carve. Again, slow and steady. I gave a little wiggle there because that one was getting stuck. You'll see some of these pieces will be long and other them, others of them will be short. And again, it's okay if some of them are little short stubby pieces that come up. But keep that blade low, just like if you were shoveling snow. You're just scraping it away a little at a time. You can see here we're not carving very deep. It's just deep enough so that those valleys avoid ink and ink doesn't fall inside of them. Okay, so I'm done. Let's check it out. I'm going to hold this up close and you can see all that beautiful texture. I carved the inside of the L and all around the outside of the L. Really, really cool. So any of the lino scraps that are on your placemat, always dump those in the garbage, please. Don't brush them off onto the table or into the floor. Any that accidentally got on the table, make sure you scoop them up and throw them in the garbage. Linoleum cuts have to be printed with the block printing ink, so I'm going to again squeeze a caterpillar of ink onto an inking plate, or use some that's already on if there is some. Use your brayer to spread ink vertically first and then horizontally. We want to spread out the inking area. Remember to listen, pick it up, and put it down so the brayer gets fully coated in ink all around it. 
Listen for that sticky Velcro sound. And look for that orange peel texture on the ink and on the brayer as well. Now I'm going to roll the ink over my carved lino block smoothly and evenly. If it's sliding, you may have to get your other hand a little dirty, as I have to do here. Just try not to put your hand on the surface of the plate. You don't want the oils from your hand um, locking the ink from sticking. So hold it from the edges, from the sides. Okay, that looks good. I'm gonna rest my brayer on its back and out of the inky area. And since I'm working in a really small space so that my camera can see what's going on, I just need to slide things around a little bit over to a cleaner surface here so that I can print this plate. You will have more space to work with. Once you're ready, you're going to align the paper and your printing plate. Again, press it down so it sticks a little bit. And now I'm going to burnish. So uh, burnishing using your hands is just about holding steady with one hand and gently putting pressure and rubbing with the opposite hand. So one hand is always stationary, the other is moving. You can also use the rounded side of a spoon and keep it nice and flat. Or you can use a tool called a barren. I don't happen to have any of those right now. But again, you're keeping it flat my opposite hand is never moving, it's holding it down while the burnishing hand is burnishing. Burnishing is about transferring ink. Make sure you don't wrinkle or bend the paper. You don't want to push the paper into the crevices on your printing plate. It's all about flat transfer of ink. I'm checking a corner or an edge to make sure it looks good, and if it does, we can slowly peel the paper off. If not, I could have put it back down and kept burnishing further. And you can see that reverse, that mirror image, printed correctly. We're going to write name and date again on the bottom right. Now that that one's done, I can set it aside to dry and I could either print this again or begin cleaning up depending on the time. Everything would need to be washed well. So here's what this looks like printed with blue ink on white paper. You could also print on colored paper. And here is black ink printed over one of my marker monotypes from a previous day.